Am I so desperate for sisterhood and friendship that I would have something that doesn't feel good just for the sake of having? In our lives and throughout womanhood, we have so many different cycles of rebirths and awakenings and things that help us expand into the woman that we want to be. Oftentimes, when this expansion is happening, we're forced to surrender to the change of our lives looking completely different to what it used to be. The winds of change brushes us into new territory and it forces us to be okay with our lives looking completely different from what we've ever experienced. Sometimes it means being okay with letting relationships go. Sometimes it means being okay with other people leaving us and through the releasing of things that no longer serve us, we still somehow find the power to step into what we're called to. And in this video, I'd like to talk about the ways that I've had to let go of relationships that no longer served me and how it's allowed me to walk into my future a little bit more solid in who I am. I had to let go of the things that were not meant to be so that my hands could be free to carry and nurture the things that were meant for me as far as relationship goes. And I hope that with what I share today will be of service to you in any way. So let's get started. When friendships end, it feels like real breakups. And how do we do that still with the same love that we had going in? I think when I grew up, like especially in my younger years, middle school, high school, I found myself being alone a lot or having relationships and friendships that just never felt right to me. But because I wanted this sense of belonging, I just kind of went along to get along. And it wasn't until maybe I got into my later teens that I discovered what friendship truly meant for me and that it was nothing to force and that if I truly wanted a sisterhood or wanted, you know, a bond with someone, I never wanted to to feel like someone was obligated to be my friend. When you are getting older and you start to meet people that come into your life not because of outside circumstances like the people from your past have been, you know, when you're an adult and you're meeting new people and there's no other ties outside of maybe walking into a party or a surrounding where you may have similar interests, it is almost a little bit scary. You're putting yourself out there for people that don't necessarily have to choose you. They don't have to wake up every day and go to a school where they're going to see you every single day. So when a person chooses you and they say, hey, like, I think that you're cool. I want to keep you in your in my life. It, it feels great. And it's definitely something that you want to go into, you know, with a clean slate, but also with an open mind to accept that Maybe this person, although it feels great right now, may not be 100% aligned with my life. And that only happens, and you only know that, when you open yourself up. I think oftentimes when we start to experience the great things that happen in friendships, like the fun memories and the inside jokes and just all of the great memories that you could have with a friend, when things go sour and you have to, you know, part ways, it's even more hurtful because you remember all of the fun times and you remember all of the the great things that you were able to have with a specific person and you often question yourself like why couldn't this last i remember having a friendship with someone um, that really meant a lot to me and i wanted to do this and she knew all of the things that i wanted and all of my dreams but when we finally decided to end the friendship or when i decided that i could no longer exist in a friendship with her and i just decided to continue on and do the things that i wanted to do it f always broke my heart that i was never able to call her um, to talk about my wins i was never able to call her and feel a sense of of, you know just camaraderie with someone that has known my dreams from the from the very beginning almost once I started to realize that this was something that I wanted to do unfortunately I experienced this you know 
terrible season of just heartbreak and betrayal but I didn't realize that maybe that type of letting go was everything that I needed to kind of focus me into moving forward sometimes when you're in a season in your life where you feel like you finally are in alignment with who you're supposed to be things are st- finally starting to come together the pieces are finally starting to make sense it's it almost seems like that's the time where everything kind of goes sour or all of the foundations that you've built over the years start to kind of get little cracks and maybe dismantle and we have to kind of experience these towers falling in order for us to get our focus back on our primary objective and because that relationship ended the way that it did and it hurt me so much it kind of woke me up to the reality of you know where my life was in that point of time the fact that I really didn't have anyone to turn to or a lot of people to turn to and all I had were my thoughts and it was just literally me and God I was forced to just get a little bit more serious about the things that I wanted to do and unfortunately it had to come from a level of heartbreak that only a friendship could give me because you know this was someone that was you know I was riding for her you know if you need me I'm there It, it really felt like a sisterhood and it kind of led me into a journey of healing my own sisterhood wounds and something that I never even realized that I needed to pay attention to it was kind of brought to the surface with the ending of this relationship and it was interesting for me to take a step back and realize you know maybe areas where I'm not my best when it comes down to friendship sisterhood and companionship in that way As much as I talk and as much as I like to think that I'm putting my best foot forward when it comes to the relationships that I'm building, regardless of all of my intentions, I still have the ability to hurt someone, hurt the people that I care about. And with the amount of grace that I need to receive, if someone is willing to accept me in my life, I have to also kind of extend that grace and that gratitude and through all of the experience that I had with our departure you know fortunately I was able to recently speak to her a couple of weeks ago and the conversation was healing because I was able to come from a different perspective it wasn't about the hurt and the pain anymore it was genuinely you know unfortunately we had to part ways for the amount of time that we did the love was still there but the parting of ways was for a valid reason and I would probably not be where I am in my life today if I was not able to see what was going on in our dynamic see what that type of influence was doing to my confidence and know that in order for me to step into my power and be the version of myself that I want to be I couldn't exist in a frequency where other women were not other people were not and to be honest I just reached a point where if I'm really serious about standing in my power if I'm really serious about doing the things that I want to do doing the things that I need to do one of the things that always kind of stood out to me was how could a person exude confidence but internally not really have it enough to use all of their creative abilities and their charisma and their talent to benefit them. Like I I got so tired of just talking about the things that I wanted to do or the things that other people are doing or all of the ways that maybe what they're doing is not necessarily genuine and it's like I just I need a piece of that and I can't waste time speaking about it anymore I needed to do it and it awoke something in me that made me a better woman for it and because I wanted more for me I also wanted more for my friends so when I was able to see that you know what I don't think we're going about things the right way 
Maybe there's a different way that we can do this because I'm not getting the results that I want. Are you? And the type of hard conversations that come up out of that, those are the type of heartbreaking awakenings that need to happen to kind of push us forward. And that's definitely what happened to me. I think for a very long time, because I longed for this bond, this sisterhood, it put me in very dangerous situations where I was around people that did not respect me and did not like me. They needed someone to be the butt of their jokes, so they kept me around because I was doing things in my life. I had a lot to talk about, and because talking about me and making jokes about me made them feel good about the things that they didn't really have the courage to do and stand up and do it you know it kind of served them the the relationship served them but as I was sitting back and I was thinking I'm like wow like why am I allowing people that are afraid to walk in truth and in faith and really make a statement in their own life make me feel bad about the moves that I want to make it mine? Am I so desperate for sisterhood and friendship that I would have something that doesn't feel good just for the sake of having? And I think when you're maybe in your early 20s, if you're younger and you're watching this and you feel like my videos resonate with you, I've seen, I've had so many different friendships with so many different girls and guys and I had the friend that would use me to lie to her boyfriend about where she was I had a friend that would always make me the girl that she would bring around for another guy's friend that was always ugly and I was just always that down girl but I would never take things far because it's like at the end of the day I'm your friend but I'm not you so this is when you are really your own woman and you define what that is and you have clear boundaries sometimes it is hard to have friends it's hard to build relationships because if you are open enough you can open yourself up to someone who uses friends as like infinity stones so they're just collecting all of these people in their lives to use and they never really see your value and they always wind up taking you for granted because they are not realizing who and what they have by you claiming to be their friend. I've always been someone that because I didn't have a lot of friends, I took that name of friendship very seriously. It wasn't that I was a mean girl, but I'm just not going to shoot the shit and have small talk conversation with anyone. So if I'm investing time and energy into you as a person, it's because I genuinely care or I consider you a friend, right? And when people have so many different friends groups and so many different friends and live in the performance aspect of friendship outside of like having solid connections it's always different when they meet people like us because when we are in a place where we're actually setting boundaries It always makes them uncomfortable, you know. We rub people the wrong way because we don't exist in their definition of friendship. And especially at this age that I'm in now, it's like I'm too grown to sometimes like participate in or entertain different types of conversations. And I feel that way for myself. Like even when I am going through things, I know there's a select few people that I can call and we can talk and we can end up laughing because I love to laugh. But I know them to a T where they're not going to tolerate me complaining about the same shit. Like they're the type of people that are like, okay, like I don't, I don't really have a lot of time. Where is this going? Are you going to make a change or not? You know, and those are the type of people that everyone needs because it in a way keeps you from being stagnant in your own pain, being stagnant in your own mistakes. And it helps you move forward. So I always appreciate the very small few people in my life that just weren't putting up with my 
ish and because I knew that there were certain things that they did not tolerate it kind of allowed me to grow up and through the things that I was going through because I had to evolve I had to move up and I think I'm just a different type of person where I grew up with like a tough love mentality. So I love that my friends really don't take a lot of shit. I love that my friends are not going to allow me to not exist in my power for too far longer because they know who I am and they are aware of my greatness to know when I'm not being great or when I'm not making the right decisions. That's what I call true friends. You know, those people that only like to speak to you when you're complaining about things about your life we don't realize it because sometimes when things are going wrong we love to talk about it to the people that we care about because we assume that our thoughts and the things that hurt us uh, the things that hurt us are in a safe place but sometimes what I had to learn the hard way is that people love to use the pain and the distractions in your life and the things that hurt you to kind of distract them from their own life and it gives them more things to talk about to take away from the things that they need to work on and never allow a person to get too comfortable speaking on your pain or speaking on things that you've gone through because you never know who they could be saying it to or whose hands it could be in and yeah you know and it sucks because now because of my experiences I'm I move so differently I just have this different idea of trust that I genuinely feel like is healthy for me but depending on who I'm speaking to it could seem like I'm a little bit closed off or reserved and if I'm choosing to set boundaries because I'm almost 30 and I'm not an open book like I know on YouTube it seems like I'm an an open book but the reality of people in my day-to-day life like where I work and all of these things the fact that they don't know anything about my life is something that as a woman you should want to keep you should want to keep a mystery about what's going on in your life you should never be going to work or any place where they're not supposed to be knowing what's going on in your life to know and I know this because I worked with a lot of women for a very long time so when you are younger and you know you're a woman of color you're doing what you're do they have a lot of respect for you the curiosity of who you are fascinates them and they want to know more about you and that is very dangerous because you don't know what who you could be talking to like I have seen outside looking in what a younger girl has done in her workplace where there were no boundaries. Like all she knew was telling things to her mom and then she worked in an environment where people were the same age as her mom. So she thought that she could just tell all of her business to these women at her job and it just did not end well. And I'm like, yeah, like I I can't imagine the type of stress that that would bring on to you so make sure that you're keeping boundaries and know that everyone is not your friend even for my romantic relationships I think I'm always trying to redefine what my dream love means for me I think because of how I grew up and the things that I was interested in the fantasy and the fairy tale stories of what love actually is I had to create a practical approach to what I viewed love was because getting to know someone, relating to them, and actually wanting to build a life with someone is pretty practical. And when you put these fairy tale like expectations on something that takes a lot of work and communication, it's um, it's hard. I was having a lot of hard, complex debates with myself about the fantasy of what I thought love was and what love was looking like in my life or the love that I was able to accept and when you are growing up with someone and you don't have many examples of what a relationship looks like all you have are the dreams 
and even now I find myself in between like there's this idea of what I think love actually is and this is how love is showing up right now in my life and it is a lot of work right and I think that at a certain age when you actually set expectations that are realistic about not only for yourself but the type of family that you want to create the type of children that you want to raise and who is going to be responsible to be doing that with you I think that as a woman it is your opportunity it is your job to make sure that you're creating realistic expectations and defining what that means for you and it's going to be different for everyone else I told myself because I did not grow up with a father present or I grew up with a father that was not only physically absent but emotionally and spiritually absent as well I need to make sure that my child is going to be raised by a father period and that's important to me because I realize all of the things that I missed but secondly I want to raise a child with someone that actually treats the mother of the child good. So many times I see different dynamics where the man or the father or even vice versa, the mother, there's not a lot of mutual respect that they have for one another. And the child is always feeling like the burden or a mistake or how could you possibly love me if y'all don't even love each other enough to have mutual respect and there's always this you know limbo that a child feels of wanting to bridge the gaps of their parents just actually having love for one another it's like what did I come from I didn't come from love obviously and it's always hurtful when that child realizes it I'll never forget when I did, you know, used to have conversations with my own father and he would never ask about my mom. Like, why are you not asking about the person that's raising your child? Why don't you care? Why aren't these things that you're interested in enough to want to build like a friendship or just a mutual respect? And I think because it stemmed from a lot of hurt and when you are emotionally stagnant, you don't really know how to navigate normalcy through, you know, mistakes from your past or moving forward, which is probably why we were never able to really have a relationship because it was too much of a mistake of him being absent. After a certain while, there's no more excuse as to why you couldn't be present. So instead of taking it full on, his only way to handle things is to kind of abandon them. And because I can recognize that, that's not something that I want at all. And that's okay. I think realizing that like, it's okay to say no and leave things where they are and not feel like it's your duty and obligation to fix things because that's not what we were put on this earth to do. I used to struggle with that a lot because I figured like, well, if I'm doing all of this work to heal myself, if I am making the decision to, you know, want to grow spiritually and be a part of this conscious community where I'm healing so many parts of myself, I want to have, you know, a friendship and a partnership that is also in that realm of wanting to do that type of work. But the more that I tried to force someone to see things the way that I did, not only was I hurting myself, but I was also hurting them and making them feel like they were not enough because they just could not see things the way that I saw them. And that's when you realize that like, okay, like maybe it's just not in my path. That maybe it's just not in alignment with what I need to do to try to pull you into where I need to be, you know? I think growing up with so many traumatic experiences towards relationships, friendships, you know, romantic relationships, I never want anything that I have to force. I never want anything that I have to pull a person into. And oftentimes when you're really passionate about connecting, because maybe it's something that you've missed when you were younger, oftentimes when it's not reciprocated in the way that you hope, it does feel like you're pulling everyone along. For so long I did that and it got just really heavy. 
it got really heavy and I didn't start living my life fully or living my life to the fullness of like balancing the energy that I exert or that I give to people my life didn't actually start until I realized how much energy I was giving to people that did not deserve it not that they were unworthy but putting that much energy into certain friendships and relationships it didn't really benefit me in the long run and I don't want any struggle love or trauma bonds or things that I always have to work through with someone I'm in a point in my life now where as a woman I want to rest in my femininity and if I can't do that in my friendships or in my relationships then it's not really nurturing to the type of woman that I want to be and I have to be okay with saying it isn't working for me anymore and I think a lot of women try to be all for all because if we don't get it done, who's going to get it done? And sometimes maybe our ego loves the success story of what people will say with the fact that you stuck by and you held on and you fought to the very end. And sometimes we, we die inside before we even get to the end. And then all, they can, all they're congratulating is a shell version of ourselves. I just never want to wake up one day and look at my relationships and my friendships and say, why the F am I here? Like, I don't even like this stuff that we're doing. I don't like talking about people. I don't like the catty things that that you guys are talking about. Or I just genuinely don't feel like we're having relationships or I just don't genuinely feel like we're having conversations that are making me the woman that I want to become. So I'm out and the minute that I started doing that I made people uncomfortable people did not like me people got me wrong people were not able to digest this version of Jasmine but at the same time I'd rather I'd rather have my full mind against the world than have you know, me against myself, but I'm everything to the world. Am I making sense? Like, I'd rather have all of my mind and be one with the relationship with myself and at war with the entire world than have a war with myself and at one with this world. Like, we want to be in this world, but not of it so we can make a change And if I'm just trying to get like everybody else, how can I possibly do that? How can I really be awake to what needs to be done or what needs to be said? Anyway, I don't know. I think the topic of friendship is just so interesting. Sometimes when I think of different topics to say, I feel like, "Mm, am I really worthy of speaking on this topic? Not that I'm, am I worthy or it's like, am I even equipped with the situations enough to speak on this and to be fair of course I am why why wouldn't I be and I see so many other videos of people talking about things and especially people much older older than me but at the same time I still feel like my experiences are valid and my experiences could potentially help someone that is probably going through the same thing as me where we maybe don't have a lot of friends maybe a lot of our friendships have brought us a lot of trauma but despite all of that we want to make sure that we're still keeping our hearts open for the better things to come like I don't want to have friendships where I'm so hurt from things that happened from my past that I don't allow the good people in like you know it's like an abandoned dog when you get them and you adopt them because of the things that they've gone through they're gonna take a lot of work for you to build that trust and i don't want anyone to come in my life and see me like some abandoned dog that i'm just gonna snap on them if i feel unsafe i'm gonna hurt them or put them in positions where they are fearing me because of the things that someone else 
did to me and yeah I don't know you guys mm. this month I'm having so many great conversations with different women and I like the fact that God is allowing me the time to get to know different women and just hear their stories and hear how like God is kind of showing up in their lives or the awakenings that are happening in their life they've been so enriching to me even if we don't have the same journey or have anything that relates at all just the fact that like their soul is meeting my soul and we're able to find this connection it always feels really good i love talking and getting to know people um thank you so much for giving me the time and the space thank you so much for watching i hope that what i said was resonating with you in some type of way if so do not forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next one